What if I told you the healthiest part of your diet is actually the one thing that's holding you back from losing your belly fat? In this video, I'm going to reveal exactly why so many people fail to lose their belly fat, what specific foods you need to avoid, and what you should be eating instead to finally get rid of that stubborn fat. I promise you this is not going to be some ridiculously complex calorie counting nightmare is very fucking straightforward, extremely simple, a five-year-old could follow it. And when I made these changes myself, it completely transformed my physique. I went from struggling with belly fat for many years to getting a six pack for the first time ever. And I'll show you exactly how you can do the same. So before we start, let me show you where most people get it wrong. And I'll use myself as an example. So. Most people tend to think losing fat is, it's about hours on the treadmill, carefully, meticulously counting every single fucking calorie, and then loading up on healthy foods like complex carbohydrates or healthy whole grains, because that's what we've been told is healthy all your life growing up. Got to get those grains, complex carbs. That's what it's all about. And that's what I thought. I felt victim to it as well. So here's chubby Ivan eating a quote unquote healthy diet. And funnily enough, around the time of this picture is shortly after I started working my first full-time job. So I finally had the money to actually buy and prepare my own food. I didn't have to eat what my parents made. And it was also around the time where I first moved out of my parents' house. So again, I had full control of my diet. I didn't have to eat my parents' food. Everything was in my control. It was the perfect situation to lock in on a healthy diet and get super shredded. And so with my lack of knowledge, I thought healthy foods meant things like oatmeal for breakfast, things like pasta or a sandwich for lunch. And maybe for dinner, I'll have some rice with some meat, some vegetables, or maybe a burrito for dinner. But clearly, as we can see, their belly fat wasn't budging. So the problem with that approach is, is completely wrong. It's, we've been fed a lie, pretty much. Grains, so pasta, sandwiches, rice, burrito wraps, especially those whole wheat bullshit ones that are exactly what everyone's telling us to eat. That is exactly what's keeping you stuck. And in the last few months, I've experimented with going strictly zero grains, not a single grain. And this is what I look like now since I've completely dropped all grains from my diet. I still eat almost everything else, meat, fruit, veggies, eggs, dairy, nuts, just zero grains. And I don't need to count calories. I don't need to spend hours on a treadmill every day it's very simple. Imagine a world where you could eat delicious, massive, satisfying meals, spend less time exercising while watching your belly fat melt away. I'm telling you it is 100 fucking percent possible. You can get lean without being constantly hungry or fighting cravings all the time. This is exactly what happens when you shift your view on grains and you understand the real problem behind belly fat. It's not about how much you eat, it's what you eat. And those healthy grains are not doing you any good. So give me a few more minutes and I'll show you exactly why your approach is garbage. And I'll show you a simple science-backed strategy that'll completely change your body and your relationship with food. It's not some, just some crazy theory. I am the living, breathing guinea pig of this approach. So what's the problem with grains? The way I put it is, eating grains while trying to lose fat is like running on a treadmill when you're trying to get to a destination. You'll be running for hours and then you look up and you're still in the same fucking spot. You haven't got anywhere. What's the point of running? You're just in the same spot. That's what it's like eating grains. So why is it so problematic? Actually, before we get into why it's so problematic, just for context, if not everyone knows what grains are. 
when I say greens, the kind of foods I'm referring to are bread, sandwiches, wraps, burritos, pasta, cereals, cookies, muffins, pastries, pizza, doodles. I know, all the good stuff. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. If you want to be fat, you can eat this stuff. So the main thing, actually, we'll get into it later. All right, so why these are a problem is they are very high GI, meaning high glycemic index. Meaning they get absorbed into your bloodstream very quickly. They spike your blood sugar very intensely. And as a result, your pancreas releases insulin in order to manage that blood sugar response. The problem with that is spikes in insulin have many issues. You, you do not want to live in a chronically high insulin state. Firstly, because chronically high insulin slows your metabolism. Just by lowering your insulin levels, you will increase your base metabolism. Insulin is also the gatekeeper to fat burning slash fat storage. When your insulin is high, your body is in a fat storing mode. When insulin is low, your body is in a fat oxidation mode. Additionally, when your insulin is spiking, actually, how would I rephrase this? Yeah, so when you're eating all these high glycemic foods, your blood sugar is going to crash from that spike. And as a result, you get hungry every two hours. This leads you to constantly eat. So you, it goes up and then it goes down and it just goes up and it's just a constant wave and you're just eating all day. This is why when you're eating shit like this, you'll eat this stuff and then you'll be hungry in like one or two hours. Or you might eat it and then you're just hungry straight away. It's like you didn't even fucking eat anything. That is why, because your blood sugar is spiking and then crashing. As a result, you have an energy crash. That's why you're tired all the time. It's why people eat all these carbs and they're all, all fucking tired. And lastly, and most importantly, is because insulin spikes lead to increases in visceral fat. So there's two types of body fat. There's visceral fat, which is the fat around your organs, and there's subcutaneous fat. Subcutaneous fat is like the normal fat, like, like the fat on top of your muscles. Why grains lead to increased belly fat or visceral fat is because your organs have more insulin receptors than the rest of the body. So when your insulin is constantly high, your organs get fat faster than the rest of the body. And since most organs are near the belly, around that belly region, that leads to belly fat, AKA beer belly. You may know of this term, beer belly. Because beer, if you didn't know, is actually wheat-based, which is why beer belly is a thing. If you consume lots of beer and wheat, you'll get lots of accumulated visceral fat. And that's why you see people with that protruding stomach look, like way more fat than the rest of the body, like this guy over here. And so people get stuck in this vicious cycle of belly fat. They consume wheat, their insulin spikes, they accumulate visceral and subcutaneous fat. Then they become more insulin resistant, meaning that the body needs to pump more insulin just to get the same effect. Then your body crashes, your blood sugar crashes, you get tired, your cra food cravings increase, so you eat more wheat. And then you just get stuck in this perpetual cycle and you get fatter and fatter, and then you look in the mirror 10 years later and you look like this dude and you're wondering what the fuck happened. So let's stop that from happening. The second and major reason why grains, specifically wheat, but also other grains like barley and rye are very bad is because they are appetite stimulants. So Wheat has an opioid-like peptide, and when you eat this, it gets broken down into exorphins. And these exorphins act on the same receptors that opioid does. So it's very addictive. It triggers addictive eating behaviors. 
like I'm sure you've experienced when you eat these kinds of foods. You can't just have one bite and be like, oh yeah, I'm satisfied. Yeah, it's like, all right, I have one bite of a cookie. Yep, I'm good. No, it doesn't fucking happen. You eat this stuff and then it's like you've consumed a drug because that's literally what's happened. And you just want more and more. For example, let's say you get a burger from McDonald's. If you just eat the burger as it is, you'll probably finish the burger and you'll feel physically full. But for some reason, you're just craving more food. Whereas if you were to just remove the bun from the burger and just eat the veggies, the cheese, the meat, after eating that, you'd be physically full, but you wouldn't feel like you need more food. You'd be satiated. It's because you don't have those exorphins acting on your brain. So that's a big reason why wheat is extremely dangerous. Last reason is because wheat is just poorly digested. Humans weren't designed to eat like hundreds of grams of wheat every day. We're not very good at digesting it. That's why most people have issues with bloating, gas, diarrhea, IBS symptoms. These things aren't normal, yet people talk about these symptoms all the time. It's because you're eating too many grains. Plus, when you have all these symptoms, you just feel like shit and you have low energy. Like, no one wants these. As soon as I cut out grains, I haven't experienced any of these symptoms in a very fucking long time. And it, it feels great. You, you, you don't realize how bad you are digesting food before until you cut grains out. And you won't be like this dude. So, again, we want to avoid bread, sandwiches, wraps, burritos, pasta, cereals, cookies, muffins, pastries, pizza, and noodles. It might seem hard, it might seem like that's all the food you enjoy, but if you want to look like the average person, go outside and look at the average person. If you want to look like the average person, you can eat like the average person. But if you want to be different, let me show you what you can eat. So it's very simple. What you want to eat instead is foods that are actually real foods, like whole single ingredient foods, not chemicals, just random shit made in a lab. You want foods that make it easy to stay in a calorie deficit without tracking, because I don't like tracking. I don't believe in tracking. You also want foods that stabilize your insulin levels. Like we spoke about before, insulin is very important. You want to keep it stable and low. You don't want foods that stimulate your appetite like drugs. We just want food, not drugs. Uh, you want food that's easily digested, high protein, good amounts of fats, and low to moderate carbs, depending on your goals. So pretty much what that leaves you with is meat, eggs, dairy, nuts, fruit, and veg. Why I've got rice there with an asterisk is because, yes, rice is a grain, but it is a bit different to wheat, barley, and rye in that it doesn't have exorphins, and it's, some people find that they digest it better. So if you feel like you can digest rice okay, then you can eat it, and if you're not trying to get super fucking lean, then you can eat rice. But I would say keep your carbs low if you're trying to get really lean, like diced, like sub 10% body fat. If you don't really care about that, you just want to be healthy, like 15% body fat, you can have a moderate amount of carbs. You can eat some rice and you'll be fine. But generally, once you start avoiding carbs, that's right, not carbs, grains, wheat, this is kind of what your meals will look like. So, so a lot of meat, steak, butter, eggs, more eggs, maybe some prawns, some kimchi, pickled onions, a bunch of fruit, lots of different types of fruits sausages, pickles, all that good stuff. Like, come on, who wouldn't want to eat this stuff? Uh, so that's it, that is everything. Hope you enjoyed that one. If you liked it, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And see you in the next one.